today we are going to explore the art of capoeira. We're going to look at the cardiovascular benefits, the torso stability benefits, as well as the joint mobility benefits. Now capoeira is an ancient art form created by enslaved Africans, developed on the streets of Brazil. It's often viewed as a dance or kind of like a choreographed movement system, but it really has a lot of benefits for health as well as self-defense. As we say in Portuguese, vamos jogar. That means let's play. If you're looking for modifications for today's movement, you're going to follow Rose. If you're looking for the full benefit and going all the way through each movement, challenging yourself a little bit more, you're going to follow Rebecca. I'll show some movements and I'll also be coaching them to make sure that your position at home is really specific and really safe because you should also modify for whatever it is that you need to do. You know your body better than me, but I'll show you position cues as I coach both of them through the process. Let's play. Okay, we're going to start with dynamic joint mobility warm-ups. It's called the TWE 12, Welch Experience 12. So let's get started. Start with your hands out in front. We're going to do finger flexes. So that's open and close the hands. Two, just like that. Nice and big, make tight fists and really extend your fingers, spread them apart. Awesome. About 10 of these is pretty good just to get all the joints moving. By dynamic stretching, we mean everything here is with movement versus holding a position. Okay, good. Next thing we're going to do is a wrist circle. So keep those fingers wide, start to rotate. Just like that. Lead with a pinky. Like you're drawing a circle in the air with the pinkies. Very good. Keep those arms shoulder height. Don't want to drop them, getting the shoulders warmed up too. Now let's just reverse direction. How you guys doing there? Good? All right. Reversing direction. Still leading with the pinkies. If I'm there, see my hand? Keeping the fingers open. Getting full mobility through the wrist. Awesome. Now we're going to go into elbow circles. So take your arms out to the sides. You're going to bend at the elbow and make circles in towards your body. Again, keep those elbows shoulder height. So these are elbow circles, our third stretch. Started with finger flex, then went to the wrist, now the elbow. We're going to work all the way down the arm. Let's go ahead and reverse direction. Good. Keeping those elbows high. You should start to feel a little bitty burn in the shoulders. That's a good thing. That means you're working. That means your system's getting charged up. That's what we want. Excellent. All right, from here, keep the arms again, shoulder height. We're going to cross the arms, what we call crossing arms. Alternate right and left over top. If you're feeling fatigued a little bit, go ahead and give yourself a hug on both sides. Nice. Hugs are good, especially first thing before your workout. You can reflect on learning when it gets more challenging. Nice. Big crossing arms, alternating right and left over top. Excellent. Now we're going to go to a shoulder circle. So arms by your sides, lift all the way up, rotate the arms at the top, and then push down. You can bend your knees as you're doing this too. Start to bring the energy up through the floor, right into your body. Make sure you take really steady deep breaths. Good. You can inhale as you go up, exhale as you push down. Notice when my arms are going up, they're slightly in front of my body. I'm not throwing them behind me. So for any swimmers out there, I'm sorry, this isn't the butterfly stroke. We're just warming up the shoulders. Nice. Very good. Okay, relaxing the arms now. We're going to go to a three-way neck opener. So the first thing we're going to do is bring that chin to the shoulder and then the other side. Switching sides. In our juniors class, we call this the no stretch. They remember it really well. They love it. <laughs> this is just turning the head. Now don't force the movement. Go to about 70% of your range and then as you start to warm up, it'll start to feel better. Excellent. Next, we're going to do the S stretch. Bring the chin down towards the chest and then lift up and down and up. So this is the second way of the three-way neck opener. Be careful not to take the head too far back. So as you're going up, also push your chin forward. Excellent. Keeping the body nice and tall. Great posture. Third one, we're going to bring the ear to the shoulder. They call this the I don't know stretch. And you can take the other hand away. And then you go to the other side. Just like that. Nice. Side to side. It's okay to extend the arm. You want to feel that stretch from the top of your ear all the way down to your middle finger. Switching sides. Again, go at your own pace. Don't rush any of these. Just opening up. Nice. Okay, now we're finished. Arms all the way into the head. We're going to work right down the trunk to the feet before we finish. So feet a little bit wider. We're going to trunk twist. When you rotate, turn all the way around and look at the rear and then switch. Also notice you're lifting one of your feet. Take any pressure off of your knees. Really important to protect those knees. They do a lot of work all day just supporting us. Excellent. As you rotate, you can swing the arms. You can put the hands on the hips. A lot of ways to modify this. 
but do keep your whole body involved. Don't just let the arms die and kind of swing, right? Got to have fun with it. Excellent. Okay, back here, hands on the hips. Keep the feet in the same position. Rotate your waist. We call these hip circles. Hip circles. So we went from a trunk twist to a hip circle. Do focus on just the hips. Keep your feet firmly planted on the floor. Knees nice and soft. And then we're going to switch it the other way. Mount you have like a big hula hoop right here. There you go. Rotate all the way through. You're not pushing too far forward with the hips or too far back. Keep your chest tall, shoulders back. Excellent. Rotating through. Hip circles. Very good. Hope you're feeling good so far. We're about to finish with the lower half. Bend the knees, keep the feet fairly close. Rose is going to show you one modification for this, okay? But Rebecca and I are going to go with the hands here lightly on the knees, no body weight, and just drawing a circle around our feet. Notice Rose is just doing a little knee bend. Little knee bend, okay? You're going in one direction. And then when you feel comfortable, switch to the other direction. And have fun with it again. You could go one this way and one that way. Okay? Important thing, keep a nice soft knee, keep your whole foot on the floor. So those are knee circles. Very important. All right, moving on. We're going to balance on one foot. Again, Rose is going to show a modification, keeping her foot on the floor. If you're balance challenged or you don't have anything to hold on to, follow Rose. Rebecca and I are going to balance on that one foot and make a circle with the foot. Circle. Nice. If you're standing on one leg, always make sure to bend that standing leg. Keep a nice pelvic tilt to help you with the floor. Not coming up too fast to your face, right? You want to balance. And then you change the other direction. Nice. Little ankle circle, that's what we call that. Then you switch and you do it on the other side. Get grounded, lift up, and circle. It's okay to use your hands, right? Play with it, have fun. Change directions when you're ready. Again, make sure you're breathing. Don't add any tension to this. This is just warming up the joints. Nice, excellent. Now we have a two-way leg swing, and then we have one more exercise after that. Hopefully you're still feeling good. Put your left arm forward about as high as you think your leg will go. Your right leg is going to come towards your left hand. It's important just to bring the knee to the hand. So we swing through the hip, all the way up and back. There's no flexion in the waist, so I'm not trying to kick high or warming up or maybe injuring my lower back. I'm holding strong. And notice Rose is just touching her foot to the floor. Rebecca and I are just kind of swinging the leg all the way through. The important key is really to keep the torso tall. So even if she's touching, just torso is tall. Locked in at the waist. Yep, swing it all the way through. Excellent. Okay, let's try it on the other side. You put the opposite hand out, other leg. You choose which side you want to start with. Swing from the hip. It's a leg swing. Again, nice bent knee on the stable side. Good. A couple more. Excellent. Swing it all the way through. Notice the torso is nice and tall. So she's holding the abdominals in, almost like she's doing a plank on the floor, just letting the hip do the work. Okay. Now the side leg swing. Remember I said two ways. This is the second way. So put your right hand out as high as you think your leg will go. Take your foot out to the side. Make sure your foot stays parallel to the floor. And as we bring the leg up towards the hand, lean towards the leg. Don't lean away. It'll help you with your balance. So you lift it up. You take it down. Good. And if your balance is really good, you can bring it all the way to the other leg without touching the floor, or you can just rest it and lift it up again. If you let your toe go up, you start to get into the hamstring. We want to make sure we're getting into the medial glute. Really more challenging muscle to work. And as you lean towards it, see people do kicks, they sit up instead of leaning back. Okay? Flexing the foot the whole time. Nice. Very good. And let's switch it to the other side. Bending that standing leg, always being mindful. One side may be different than the other. Right hand might have been up here, left hand's here. Doesn't mean you're broken, just means you're human. You gotta work on both sides. Excellent. Flexing that foot. Very good. How about two more? Fantastic. All right, last but not least, the whole body's charged up. We're gonna go to the floor and do a really modified push-up. So we're gonna bring the hands super close. Bring the elbows to the rib cage. Do not let your elbows pass your ribs, okay? We're gonna hold in that position and then press all the way up. Modified here, Rose is gonna be on the thighs, right? So her knees are not on the floor. And then she's gonna press up with the hands all the way up and then modify down to the ribs. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push up for one, nice. Rebecca goes in that same position with legs straight. Down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Press up for two. Keep the body straight. Activate the glutes here. Activate the quads. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push up. Down again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push up. How about give me a count, Rebecca? Go. 
One, two, three, four. Oh, five, beautiful. Six, eight, nine, nice. And rows down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way up. Two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And all the way up. And last one. Let's hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What comes after eight? Nine. And ten. ten. Good Woo. job. All the way up. <laughs> Nice, shake it out. That is your TWE 12. Hopefully your body is nice and warm. Okay, we're gonna go into some torso stability work. Getting that torso strong is important for long-term health. So we're gonna start with a straight arm plank. We're gonna add a little bit of foot flexion. So coming straight down to the floor, hands under shoulders, legs straight back, activate the glutes and the quads, and make sure that your hands are directly under your shoulders. In this position, once you feel nice and strong, glue the quads together, activate the glutes, and pull your belly button in towards your spine. Really pull strong. That's your starting position. Holding that for a minute, ideally. A couple of modifications here. Rose has her knees down, heels very close to the glutes, hands directly under the shoulder. She's pushing into my hand up here, trying to keep her neck nice and long. Rebecca, same thing. Notice if my hand is here, her head is in a straight line with her hip, right down to her ankle. Very important to keep that body alignment, okay? So that's your straight arm plank. Looking good, guys, nice and strong. Spread those fingers apart wide on the ground. Great. Next thing we're gonna go into is a three-pointed chair. So go ahead and come to a seated position. Coming out of that plank, one leg straight, the other foot bent. In this position, if the leg is straight, that hand is on the floor, looking straight ahead, protecting your head. When we do this three-point chair, we change side to side. Okay, Rose is doing a seated chair, switching side to side. Notice the reason Rebecca's head drops out of frame is she puts both hands on the floor and looks underneath. So this is that three-point chair. Another modification you can do, you're feeling particularly strong, is lift that hip off the floor and then change. I'm showing a more advanced version. Change. This is our three-point chair. If you're feeling really frisky, add a push-up. Good. But don't drop the hip to the floor. Nice. You can get creative with it. There's a lot of creativity. It's improvisation in motion. That's what makes it healthy. Good for the brain, too. All right. Feeling good? Next one we're going to go to is a forearm plank. So in that position, we're going to go onto the forearms. Elbows under the shoulders now. Remember for the straight arms, the hands were under the shoulders. Now your elbows under the shoulders. Same cues. Glutes are activated, quads are activated. Hollow out the back. Don't let the shoulders drop or bring your belly button towards the floor. Same cues here. Rose is still modifying. Her quads are on the floor, not the tip of her knee. So you don't need a nice cushion, a nice cushion mat. If you don't have one, it's good. Just pick somewhere in the house as long as your body. You got space to do this training. Heels stay close. Shoulders stay directly over the elbow. Head and body, straight line. Same thing with Rebecca here. Now what she can do is start bringing this knee to the shoulder. That's another option. The rose can just lift the leg. Two ways to modify, have fun with it. It's shifting the balance a little bit in your body. You wanna keep equal pressure on both elbows, hollowing out that chest, engaging your core. Super important. That's the forearm plank with the knee to shoulder. Very good. All right, we got time for one more. Straight leg balance. So go ahead and come up to standing. In a position with one leg back, one leg forward and bent, you're gonna open up that front foot, take pressure off the knee because we're gonna rotate. Straight leg comes through and it floats above the floor. Engaging your obliques here. Anytime you're on one foot, you're engaging your abdominals to keep you balanced, okay? So Rose is doing this motion by touching a foot to the floor and just doing little lifts. Rebecca's gonna float that foot the whole time. She's on fire over here, right? <laughs> 30 seconds each side, a minute each side, an hour, whatever it is that you wanna play with. Have fun with it. The nutrition tip for this week is to drink half of your body weight in water today. So for example, if your current weight is 150 pounds, that's 75 ounces of water today. Not 75 pounds. Proper hydration reduces soreness and inflammation. Really important during your exercise period. If you're starting to exercise more, your body's gonna crave more water. So feed it what it's looking for. Okay, now we're gonna get these joints moving. So the body swing is the first one. Take your feet about shoulder width apart. Put your arms out at shoulder height. 
Every time one leg goes back, that arm is gonna bend for the body swing. So let's start. Swing to the side, swing to the side. It's like you're a flying airplane. Body swing, swing the body, that's it. My back leg goes back, there's a little bend in it, but that rear heel never touches the floor. I'm gonna turn sideways so you see it. Heel stays up, heel stays up. Both knees can bend a little bit. Front one obviously more than the back one. So as you see their position here, virtually the same, right? Swinging back, keeping that front leg nice and bent, firing up that quadricep, being friendly to the knee, keeping it behind the toes, and just swinging the body side to side. Capoeira we call this jinga, body swing. Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit to it. So as we're doing that body swing, let's freeze right here. Good. Rose is gonna modify and just do a straight leg balance. So this is body swing and straight leg balance on one side. Rebecca's gonna to continue to switch both sides. So we'll start it from here. Open the front toe, straight leg balance. Rose is gonna keep doing that on one side. Becca and I are gonna change sides. Nice. Remembering to open that front toe to keep your knee safe. Here, swing through. You wanna float that foot as close to the floor as you can without touching. If you need to modify, just put the toe down like Rose is showing. Good, go ahead and switch sides, Rose. Good, and she just touches the foot to the floor, keeps isolating that one side. Nice, very good, change. So you're swinging the body with a straight leg balance. Keep that going, fantastic. Body swing, very popular in the movement uh, sections of Capoeira. Just means to keep your body moving so you're less of a target. Also makes it look more like a dance, right? All right, the third one we're gonna go into is this body swing. We'll stay with it, but we're gonna add a side escape. So starting in this position again with me, please. When we take this leg back, we're gonna reach to the side. Rose is gonna modify. She's not gonna put that hand down. Becca and I put the hand all the way down to the floor. You come back up, change, change, and go to the side. Change, change, and go to the side. So Rose is doing that without the arm movement. She's just escaping and putting that hand pretty close to the floor without touching. Don't need to get all the way to the floor. The knees aren't friendly for you this morning. <laughs> you just go as far as you can go. You need to adjust the movement to fit your body. That's super important. Always listen to your body first. It knows what it's going through that day. You go against it, then you have a different conversation. Not as healthy. <laughs> so pace yourself, right? Very good. Side escape. This is the body swing and side escape. Fantastic. You guys are looking great. Let's do the last one. We're going to keep this body swing going. Very basic. Like we said, joint mobility. Healthy for your joints. The more they move, the longer they'll move. <laughs> We're going to add a low guard position. So from here, let's freeze it. We're going to keep our hands in the same position. Now the foot comes straight up close. We squat. This straight hand, again, Rose will modify. Hers isn't going to the floor. If you have the range of motion in your knees, put that hand on the floor. When you come back up, you switch and then take it all the way down. Come back up, switch, and take it all the way down. This is protecting my face, but I'm ducking under something going over my head. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Don't worry about it today. Just get that low squat. Notice my body stays tall, my hips drop low. Have my hand there for balance if I need it. Keep switching side to side. Check it out. Nice. Hand down. Fantastic. Good. All right, let's work some skills. Capoeira is known for its kicks. So modify as you need to. Rose is going to show some modifications on the kicks. Rebecca and I are going to go all out. Starting from the body sway. If you're following the two of us, she's going to isolate in that foot back position. So if we're all here, first side back. First one is the inside crescent moon. So we're taking it from the outside in. And then you can change or you can isolate and stay with Rose. So this is that body sway you already learned. Making that half moon from the outside in and taking the leg all the way back. Incorporate the hands or not, if you want to. It adds a little bit more style, adds a little bit more flair, adds a little bit more fun. Got what is also known as the dance with a smile. <laughs> Play it. Express yourself, right? That's the idea. That's when you have fun, you can take your brain, put it somewhere else. If you have stress for the day, you can play in your workout. Those are the most fun anyway, then it doesn't feel like work. Nice, keep it moving. Outside to inside, find that balance. She's already gone to the other side. So you can isolate it or you can switch. It's all good. All right, so back to here. Second kick from this position. 
We're gonna do exactly the opposite. One you went outside in, now we're gonna go inside out. So outside crescent moon, here we go. Out. And you change or you isolate like Rose is doing. Isolate. Nice, make that crescent inside to outside. Just draw the half moon out. Very good. Good. Feeling good? Good. Making that outside. Nice. Stays on that one side. Excellent. Keeping the hands in, helping with balance, giving her a focal point straight ahead, opening up the hips. Good. It's the second side, right? Excellent. Good. So she's switching. Any way you play it is good. Over time, you'll build the coordination. Body and brain will start to have that fun conversation. Just keep expressing. Okay, next one. We're gonna start with a push kick. So again, in this body sway position, back leg's gonna come straight forward, push. Flex the foot, lean the body back, then put the leg back. And if you wanna change, push. Again, my hands can do a lot of expressions. This is one. This is another one. This is another one. This is another one. You just play it. Let your body, let your personality come out, okay? That's the push kick. Very good, from the jingle, push. Notice how the body leans back slightly when you push? It's not a snap from the knee. It's an extension from the hip, and that bottom leg pushes down. Very good, you switch the sides, yeah? Awesome, she's on. <laughs> there you go, swing, swing, press, push. Very good. Okay, the next one we're gonna go into is a hammer kick. So I'm gonna re reference you back to when we worked on opening that foot. So start in this position, but open your front toe. We're gonna bring that knee to the midline, then we'll extend from the foot. So this is the hammer kick. So from here, and then it comes back. Then you close the toe, and you can change. Open that front toe. Helps with your stability, helps you turn the femur over. When I turn it over, I can bring it across versus having the foot go up. Right? Also engages that medial glute more. Gets the obliques involved. Full body. Nice. Hammer kick. Keep it going. Nice. Good. There you go. Excellent. As that knee comes out, if the foot wants to express itself, let it happen. Good. Important thing is just bringing that knee up. Engaging, staying over that standing leg, which is fantastic. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna go into a cool down, stretch those muscles we've really worked and fired up, and end with a one minute breath meditation. So starting with a lying hamstring stretch. Who's there on the back? Rose is gonna modify by putting both hands behind her leg, the straight leg and flexing that foot. Rebecca has her hand inside the foot. So in this position, you're gonna bend and straighten the leg, both of them will start doing that. Most Rose is just keeping that foot flexed and pushing it up to the ceiling. Rebecca's leg never really gets straight. She's keeping the knee outward on an angle, focusing more on the medial hamstring. Rose is getting more central and lateral, and just opening and bringing it back. The important, here, important part here is to keep some resistance. So when Becca is kicking out with her foot, she's pulling down with her hand at the same time. Same thing with Rose, as her hands are here, She's pulling the leg back towards her, but kicking her leg away from her at the same time. And go ahead and switch legs, guys. Go to the other side. So you pick which one of these you want to do at home. Both will focus on this hamstring, that muscle right on the back of the leg, really important. Where you have the position here, kicking out in it. It's our lying hamstring stretch. Fantastic. All right, go with the breath. Really important in these stretches, we're moving a little bit. Sometimes you can hold. Most important thing is to breathe. As we rotate over, we're going into face down, the prone arch, okay? So we're here, hands are back by the chest. Rose is gonna modify with her forearms down. Rebecca's gonna put those hands down. The important thing here is when you push up, to free your ears and your neck up, okay? Push the shoulders down. Don't let them hunch up here. And you wanna lift from the sternum, okay? As you're lifting from the sternum, that may mean you need to adjust your hands out here and push the floor away in order to keep your shoulders down, okay? And if you're on the forearms, same thing. Point the sternum up to the ceiling. Keep the neck long. You can even activate the glutes a little bit and push your legs into the floor. This is our prone arch, okay? 
Again, really important to breathe here. Get the breath going. Nice. All right. Coming out of that, we'll come all the way up to a standing straddle position. So with the feet wide, about double shoulder width, take the navel to the thigh. And then put your hands wherever they agree to go as long as your leg stays straight. So maybe you're right here at your thigh, pulling your body down. Maybe you're reaching towards the calf. I don't recommend you pull on your knee or put any pressure on your knee, it's not healthy. Maybe your hands get to the ankle today, who knows? But try to keep your body flat, bring your chest towards the thigh, and keep the leg straight. Really important. Good job. Come all the way up through the center, let's switch to that other side. Transition, you can open the toe, you can keep the toe here. Listen to your body, make the modification you need to to make sure it feels good. You put in all this work, might as well feel good to cool down, right? but it also should feel a little bit like work. You never want to sit passively in a static stretch. So you're engaging the muscles while you're trying to lengthen. There you go. And again, breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep the breath going, it's your friend. All right, coming right back up. Last two, we're gonna go right back down to the floor. We're gonna do a seated twist. So one leg's gonna be straight, You'll step over that straight leg. If your left leg is the one that steps over, grab it with your right arm. If you do the other side, go for it. You wanna to turn towards the outside of that leg. So you see where they both are? Towards the back. As you're turning towards the back, really important here, this hand that's behind you is pushing you forward towards the leg. The arm that's in front is holding you against that leg. So the posture's up and then you rotate. Not good to kind of sit in the slouch and just see how far you can turn. Sit up tall and rotate. Use your eyes to get more rotation. Look behind you. Fantastic. Obrigado por jogar. Thank you for playing. Tune in next week to explore the application behind each capoeira movement we experience today. Fight for your health. It's a gift to be able to but you have to decide to act. Cradle defeating the label, the people are able to eat at the table now. Divine up our cheddar, we gotta get better. United together, we tighter than ever now. Forgotten, forsaken, forever mistreated, debated, disputed, but now.